What's going on, everybody out there in internet land? Big Sean here, back in the dungeon, and uh, uh, we're getting ready to start a new series this week of tuning. So I'm going to try to help you guys understand and get better at or start working on tuning calls and talk to you about why it's so important, maybe give you some tips, so on and so forth. But prior to that, I'm going to show you Jackson outside. I have to. It's my buddy's son. We got him cleaning up poop. Starting to thaw out here in Minnesota, finally. <laughs> He's looking at birds, playing in the dirt. Speed up, jump. Hurry up. You're slow. This is his punishment for being a bad kid at school. Making him clean up dog poop. Anyway, back to the uh, task at hand. So today I'm going to cover, the phone's not going to be on me very much. Lucky for you guys, you don't have to look at my face. But uh, I'm going to turn the phone. I got my little tripod set between my legs here. It might kind of be a pain in the butt. Uh, what's up, Jason? But today I'm going to cover um, the original lineup. So acrylic and wood, Mr. Biggs and Big Kahunas. Goose calls and uh, the gray guts, which is the standard guts that come in them. Tomorrow, I'm going to cover the next gen series with the red, white, and blue guts. So each day I'll cover something a little different um, because it can be very intricate. Um, it, not a doubt in my mind, tuning the calls is 100%, 100% the most important part of call making and call manufacturing. Um, you have to have the call to where it's easy to blow, but yet you still have all the tones and everything you're looking to get out of your call too. And each call in my lineup, and I'm sure other people's too, you're looking for a different sound um, and a different pitch. So that all comes into play when you're tuning the call. What's up, Travis? What's up, Brian? So it's going to be detailed. Um, and most of you guys probably won't ever have to worry about it too much. But I want to talk to you about the importance of it, show you how to work on your call if you had to, and if you want to mess with it. Um, the only way you're going to get good at tuning calls is doing it over and over, messing up, going, burning through reads, trying to figure out exactly where you like the call. Uh, the better you get at tuning the call and knowing how you like it, the better call you're going to be, I think, because you understand your style and exactly how you like the call. Now, every call that gets shipped out of here. Every call, I finish tune. I do everything to it. I shave the reed, I cut the reed, whatever. Eventually it's gonna get to a point where I'm gonna have some other people shaving some reeds for me, save me some time, because I'm not gonna have time to do them all. Um, but I will still, that's my guarantee, my personal guarantee, my promise for the company is to always tune every call personally, because that is the single most important part of a duck or goose call is the tuning. It's not what it looks like. It's not the fancy engravings on them. It's not all that stupid crap. doesn't matter. Um, I've told people before, you can take a piece of PVC pipe um, with a 7 8 diameter in the center, stick some guts in it, and make it sound kind of like a goose because it's all about the guts, the internal components, and how it's tuned. The outside, a lot of it's for looks, and that's just the way it is. I know these other call companies probably don't want me to tell you that, but it doesn't matter what the call looks like on the outside. It doesn't matter a whole lot on the internal um, bores and dimensions of the internal part of the call. It's all tuning. And who's tuning the call before it's sent to you guys? Um, whether I go to a store or whatever. But all mine, no, there's, like I told you before, there is no stores. There's nothing. It's all direct. So I'm going to try to get my phone on here without turning the damn thing off. So... <clears throat> Basically, first thing we're going to talk about is the gut channel, okay? This is the original gray gut, okay? This is what is on the website is the original big rig custom gray gut, whatever it is on the website. It's just gray guts is what I call them. So this gut is modified um, and taken from my old hunting clucker gut. Um, you can kind of tell it's a clucker gut, but 
because it's got this mold hole on it. But this is our gray gut. This one's a little bit easier blowing than the blue ones, the blue tone boards for the red, white, and blue guts because the groove's not broke in as much. Um, so this is the gut that I recommend for people who are just starting out or looking for an easier call to blow and they're not super advanced. Um, this one I took a little sharpie to so you can kind of understand where the reed hits. All right, so everywhere that's black from here up, you know, here back the reed sits too, but that's where the reed, that's where the reed hits, okay? So, so you understand, you see that groove that's down in there. Here you can see it on the call that's not painted. Um, that's from the reed slapping down inside of that plastic over and over and over and over and over. That's what makes it a broken gut. Um, that's where your reed has to drop down into and stay on that surface. So it's very important that reed has got proper placement and it doesn't catch on there. So we're going to start from the beginning. I'm going to shave a reed for you. It's going to be hard for me to do because I normally have this in between. Now, a lot of guys talk about there's a top and a bottom to goose reeds, whatever. With ours, there's not. It's a flat. We use 100% flat reed. You can take it and bend it like this. You can take it and bend it like this. I mean, it I mean, depends on the way you pressure your fingers. It's a flat reed, either way you look at it. So it's just kind of it's a flat reed. Ours does not have a curve up or curve down. So it doesn't matter what side you shave. Um, does, you can shave it on anything. I use this. This is like my eighth one I've gone through, but it's an old uh, A50 mouthpiece. Anything to hold it, basically. I like this because I can put my finger in it. I've shaved literally tens of thousands of reeds. Um, so it's, you know, it's important to have something you can hold on to. There's little vice clamps and stuff guys make. I mean, you could use just any piece of PVC or a piece of acrylic even. Anything works. First of all, you got to have a sharp knife. So, this is what I use. I use these cheap suckers right here. They're like 60, 70 cents a piece. Um, you know, I go through and I wait till I find a sharp one. If it ain't sharp, I put it in the bin for cutting boxes because it's got to be sharp for me um, to shave a reed. Boy, this is hard. So, basically, no, well, that knife sucks. Next. Like I mean, you gotta find you gotta find a good sharp knife, and that's why you buy the cheap ones. You don't buy an expensive one. You don't have to use a razor knife either. You can use um, you can use a uh, piece or uh, like a pocket knife of some sort. Um, a lot of guys used to use these. Um, Freddie used to use these are like carving decoy carving knives. Really, anything that has sharpness to it, it's got to be really sharp to take off layers. When you're shaving this reed, you're taking off layers of this mylar. That's what you're doing. Okay, so this this knife's a little better. So, what I do, okay, let's say we're going to tune this up for a for a acrylic Mr. Big with the gray guts. Now, each call, I really shave the reed a little bit different for each one. This reed here is going to be pretty thin. I'm going to shave the edges and then the tip more than everything else. But I still start back here and do a uniform shave all the way across. So I'm going to try to do that while holding on to this. It's hard to do. All right, I got to put it against my chest. I can't do it. I gotta hold it a little different here, so you guys maybe can can see what I got going on. But whoop, there goes that. <laughs> I gotta hold it kind of different so I can get it done. But I hold it against my body like this. Doesn't matter what you do, as long as you're taking layers off, right? I've done so many of them. Just go at it. I get a uniform deal across the whole back, about halfway where the wedge starts, kind of where I start. And then I'll do these edges good and thin. Do the edge on this side. And then concentrate a little bit here on the tip. Now, I shave my reeds pretty thin for almost all my calls. Um, you, that's about, it's going to be about right. You can see through the edges a little bit there. 
Um, I might do a little more off the tip because this is for Mr. Big, so we want it nice and high pitched. You know how you get good at this? Do it over and over and over and over and over and over, and you're going to get good at it. It just takes time. Okay, so that would be, see how nice and clean that is? Good looking reed. Not, I know that the phone's kind of bouncing in and out, but that's a nice shaved reed. You can tell on the edges, it's a little thinner on the edges, exactly how I like it. Now, I shaved one earlier to show you what was too, oh, too much. See this one here, you can kind of see through the center. It's kind of got that translucent look where you can see through the center of the darn thing. That's too much. Um, that reed's a little too thin, and it's going to catch. It's just not going to sound right. It's going to be flat. So there is a fine line where you go too thin. If you get to the point where you can have spots where you see through it, um, then it's too thin. But really, the best way to get good at shaving reeds is just get a bunch of them and practice and practice and practice and practice like anything else. Um, and there's always going to be burrs on it, so I like to use, it doesn't matter what you use, this is like a little Brillo pad thing, just something to clean the edges up, um, make it look nice. It doesn't really affect the sound any, but I like to make them look nice before I ship them out to you. So... <clears throat> Um, with the Mr. Biggs, this is what I like to do. We use a, just a generic style reed. That's the same on each side. Doesn't matter. But each call that I tune, I personally uh, do a few things to each of the reeds. I knock off these corners here and here. I like to do that. Kind of makes the, the reed fit inside the call better without it pinching. To knock those down, doesn't matter what you do. Knock knock those down. You don't have to do this. This is something I like to do. So when you get the call, this is what's going to have done to it. And also the tip. These ones for the gray guts, they're a little too long. So I'll take and knock this tip down a little bit because the tip will catch. If anything's going to catch, it's going to be that tip right there. And with these broken guts, oops, sorry, it's not showing. Um, I like to do that. You know, again, you don't have to, like if you're messing with your own call, this isn't something you have to do, but there's lots of little tips and secrets of the trade that I've developed over the last God knows how many years I've been tuning calls. I've literally tuned 30, 40,000 calls I get. I don't know. I mean, so many. So it's very intricate. Little tiny moves make a big difference. The better you can get at it, or the more you can do it, the better you're going to get at it. So, and here's the wedge, okay? And the wedge is nothing more than a wedge, tapered wedge, okay? So, sometimes if it's, though, sometimes the wedges will be too big, come out of the mold too big, and we'll take them and rough them down like this and take a little bit of layer off the bottom so they fit into the call better, but you really don't know until you try it first. So this one, I already sanded down a little bit, fits into the call. I did, I had it tuned earlier with a different reed. But, you, okay, there's that's how you start right there. You have the tone board minus the dog hair. <laughs> oh, the joys of dogs. <laughs> okay, and the wedge. So you can, I don't care how you do it. You, there's been people uh, taught you a million different ways how to put it together. Not like that. Um, you can hold it with your finger and thumb, forefinger, whatever. Just put put stuff in there. Get a beginning point, right? So then you need to make sure this reed, and I've talked about this a million times, this reed has to drop down in this tone trough without catching, right? So if your reed sits there, it's way too much, and you're going to lose too much air. The call's barely going to break over. If you go up here and it's past it, you can't push the reed in there. It's not going to work. It's going to ground itself out. So there's a fine line where you want to push in there and not touch the tip or the edges. So I'm trying to get it in focus here on the phone. That's the problem with going live. But So it's going to look something just like that, okay, give or take. So you get it on there, and then basically what you want to do is just tighten it up. Push it in together, tighten it up. Now, I don't think that it's a huge deal on how tight you get it, how tight you don't get it. Um, as long as your guts are snug and they're fitting in there tight, you don't want it too loose because your guts can fall out and move. You want it tight but not too tight because if you go too tight, then you start pinching the reed and it starts to get a cup in the center. 
again, so there's a fine line with everything. So I tell the average guy, just push it in until it's tight. I mean, you, I mean, you can see it's pushing on my finger. It's pretty tight, but I'm not doing any He-Man strength on it to get it perfect. All right, so you see, listen. Okay, that reed is just barely catching on that edge right there, okay? So you can listen again. I mean, not a lot. It's not staying in there, but it's catching. So what I'll do is take a small file. Um, doesn't matter. It does. You can go to, I go to like the beauty store and get all these files and they look at me like I'm some kind of a queer going in there, but clean this tip off. So in every call I do in here, I do this too. Um, I mean, I want it perfect. So when you guys are working on your own calls, that little bit, it counts. So you could it's barely catch can hear catching just a tiny bit. And then clean up the bottom. You know, basically, you can form this reed however you want to form this reed using a file. It's a piece of mylar plastic, and you can form it any way you want to form it. Okay, so the reed's dropping in there. It's tight on this edge. It's tight on this edge here. Um, let me show you this gut again. You I mean, you can see you want that reed to fit into the molded part where the old reed used to drop down all the time. It's very important that it fits in there perfectly. So now we get it, you can play with it. You can move this part around, jiggle it, um, give it a little tension, whatever. Tighten it up. Take the call. Okay, now that's exactly how I'd ship that call out to you guys right there. It's easy to blow. It's high pitch, doesn't hardly take any air. And it's that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Now let's take one apart here. Here is a um, here's a hedge, big Kahuna, right? So this got chipping. That's why it's here. Um, but say if you get this call and you get it from me and you blow it and you're like, man, this thing sounds like crap. I don't know what's going on. It's most likely not the call in the way it's tuned. It's most likely different than what you're used to or it doesn't you know sound the same as your other call so you automatically think it's mistuned it's junk well it's not 99 percent of the time and that's my personal guarantee but when you get it um almost all the guts i put uh tune lines on um if i don't sometimes i get going doing too many and i forget to as soon as you get the call take a little sharpie like this and just make a little line across there it's basically just a reference line i try to do it on all mine just so it gives you guys a reference point to go back to um if need be so say you get this and you blow it i blow it for you right now it sounds absolutely fine <laughs> um you're like oh all right i'm gonna mess with this i don't recommend this there might be a little uh e80 e what is it e6000 or something i use on there yeah, E6000. It's like a glue, but it's a rubberized adhesive I put on most of the calls. If the guts are, I think that they ever might come loose, I put a little bit on there. It just kind of helps hold them into place. It's not like it's you can't get them off. All you got to do, well, you can push in with your fingers because, remember, this wedge is tapered. So you can push in with your fingers like this, or you can hit it against the table and they come loose and pop out. So it's not really a big deal. And if there's glue on there, you just clean the glue up. It's, it's really not hard. Guys make it a lot harder than it is. So say, well, I did, that call seemed too high pitched to me. You know, that I don't think Big Sean tuned it right. I, don't, I know what I like, and I like it deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this call back apart. I'm going to get it kind of halfway in its spot, but I'm going to leave more reed showing. Okay, so you can see, you can see there um, where it's, it fits down in there, but it's, the wedge is back further on the reed. So there's more reed showing, therefore it's a longer reed set. When you have a longer reed set, and more reed showing, it's going to be deeper and a lot lower pitch and sometimes usually a little harder because that reed is sticking out further. So it takes a little bit more for it to break over. So like, okay, well, I got back further than his original line. Let's tighten it up and see what kind of sound we got. It fits down in there. Might be catching a little bit. Let's just twist this. Sometimes you can just take this and just move it a tiny bit, and it'll quit catching. I mean, it's so minute on these. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so wow, I like that. That's nice and deep. That's exactly how I want it. Okay, so then make you some new lines on there, put a new mark on there, whatever you want to do so you know exactly where it's at. Say, I want it higher pitched. I want to make it high pitch. Pretend it's Mr. Big. So again, push the guts in, let the you know the wedge be tapered. It'll it'll come out. If worst case, you just push a pen on it. Don't twist it too much. Always push it in. If not, sometimes you can break the guts off. I've had a lot of guys do that. So so if you want a higher pitch call, this is just a basic rule of thumb. You wanted a higher pitch call. Say you're working with uh, Mr. Big or something. I don't know. Or maybe you even got a big kahuna and you want a higher pitch. Then you would make sure that this wedge goes up further. So you have a shorter reed set. Okay. So it'd be like that. So now you got a real short reed set. Now this is not going to sound correct because it's in a big kahuna, but that's how you get it higher pitch. Everything's got to be same. It's got to be pushed down in there. When you blow it now, it's going to be real high pitched. <laughs> See, way too high pitched. So you're like, oh crap, that's too much. So push it in and get it right. Pull it back out. Like, well, okay, there's his original line right there. So, and that's still good there. Let's go just past it. Let's just cover up his original line. Okay, so you can see there that it's just covering up my original line, so therefore it's going to be a little higher pitched. Um, wiggle your tone board around, make sure it's in the right spot so your reed just fits in there. Tighten it up, make sure you're, oh, hear that? You don't want that, so watch this little bit of a jiggle. Maybe. Going, but sometimes you can take that and just yep, now it's gone. You can take this tone board and just jiggle it a little bit this way and pull a little bit out, and it's just enough to where it quits hanging up on you. So now it's going to be high pitch again. Okay, it's high pitch and it's losing air. So you can look at that and tell me why is it high pitch and losing air? Well, it's obviously high pitch because it's a short reed set. But it's losing air because there's a little bit too much of a gap. I'm trying to hold my fingers here so it stays in focus. But there's a little bit too much of a gap around the reed right here. So here, the reed's not really that tight on this edge where that mold line is. So it's a very minute piece. But I can tell, because I've done a million of them, that it's losing air. So you want to tighten it up a little bit. Same thing over here. See, it's got too much of a gap right there at the end when you push it down. A little too much. So you want to move the reed up this way a little bit more. So you can jiggle it. I like to, you don't have to take the whole thing apart if you think it's pretty close. Um, or you can take it apart. And then uh, just go at it again. It's very tedious sometimes if you're going to be retuning your calls and messing with them. I don't recommend it. And that's why sometimes I get so far behind is because I'm super picky when it comes to tuning these calls when I send them out to you guys. I won't send one out unless it's tuned to where I'd put it on my lanyard. All right, so we're going to get it back tight up. Oop, I'm not on camera. You want to get it to where it's tight. <laughs> Pardon me. To where it's tight up in there, but not catching. So see that gap there? It's going to be too loose again. See, just that little bit of gap there, it's going to be too loose. So I'll start it all over, push it back down in there, and just kind of pull it up, maybe give it a little tension. There it's getting tighter, right? Just You don't want to catch, but you want it just at that fine point. Okay, so then tighten it up. It's not catching, it's tight. Okay, it's sharp now, but it's, still, it's too high pitched because the reed set's still too short. So, being that I know where it needs to be, I'll cramp it back in. I'll go back to my original tune line that I have. Come on, fall out of there. And I'll go back to use my original tune line and get it where it's supposed to be. There's a lot of tricks, a lot of little things you can mess with to get it right. Um, when you get the call from me, it will be tuned right, 100%. And it will be exactly how I'd have it on my lanyard if I were to use it. So I'm back to my original tune line here. It's tight around the edges without catching. So you're going to have a nice, deep, mellow sound.
Okay, so that's a big kahuna with the, the gray guts in it. And then this was the Mr. Big with the gray guts in it. So you can kind of see a little bit of the comparison here. <clears throat> this, the reed set here is going to be a little bit longer. Here it's going to be a little bit shorter because you're using a shorter call in general. You're looking for a higher pitch sound. Here you're using a longer call, so you're looking for a little bit deeper sound. So this part of the reed, the part of the reed showing shave side up, is going to be a little bit longer than it's going to be on here. That's just the way it's supposed to be, and that's how it goes. So keep that in mind if you're tuning your own calls. If it's a short call, if it's a long call, you got to know your style. <clears throat> you got to know your style and exactly how you want it. So there's a lot of things that can come into play. Tomorrow I'm going to cover more uh, in-depth stuff. I'll spend more time on it, and we'll work on the red, white, and blue guts. But that's the basic idea of the gray guts and how to tune your call the basic way now there's a, if you want something that's scratchier um, you want something that's got a different sound to it like with the red white and blue guts i go a little bit thinner even yet with the reeds because it's such a broken tone board these have a certain spot where i stop like if these get to a point where it's uh, you like i showed you can see through them it starts to get translucent and that means it's too thin and then you're gonna have stuff messing up um i feel what happens when you shave a reed is you're just like i told you you're just taking layers of mylar off that reed that's that's all you're doing and that's kind of bright i want to blind you guys um so you're taking layers of the reed off there making it uh what's up richard um so you're making it bounce down in that tone trough easier um there are some call companies that don't shave the reed I personally think it's laziness and mass production. Most mass production calls, people that are pushing out hundreds and hundreds of calls, thousands of calls, they ain't going to sit there and shave reeds. It ain't going to happen. They're not doing it. They don't have time to do it, and they don't want to do it. I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do it even if I was selling 5,000 calls a year because I feel it's the most important part of a goose call is the tuning. And what helps you get that easier blowing call and a more goose-like sounding call is having a nice, thin, shaved reed so it bounces up and down and it reacts better to your air pressure. I think it's very important. Now, some guys could argue it all they want, but it doesn't matter on the call design. Um, if the call's right or the guts are right or what, it doesn't matter. You can still, I can put an unshaved reed in my guts and I can blow it just fine. But the difference is when I put a shade reed in there, it's a lot easier. It's goosier. It's got a little bit more of a raspy sound to it. it sounds more like a goose. And I've tuned thousands and thousands and thousands of calls. Even my contest call, I put a shade reed in because you can get low end better. Um, the reed just vibrates easier when it's thinner. Now, the reason we don't use a, a thinner reed in general so we don't have to shave it is because each call is different. Some high pitch, some low pitch. So... Every call gets a different style of uh, reed that shades a little bit different from me. So if I just had one real thin reed and I couldn't manipulate it and make it thinner on the edges and thinner on the tip, then I wouldn't get my custom tuning. And I think it's the most important part. That's why I've always told everybody, yes, I tune every call that leaves this place. And that's just the way it is and the way it's always going to be. So... Every call that leaves here, and now there's no dealers, I don't have to worry about anybody messing with them. Any call that leaves here, my lips touch this, my fingers touch this, and it's to my liking before I send it out. Uh, like I've told you before, it's kind of what kind of gets me in trouble because I get behind. Sometimes if i got a call I'm just having problems with, I'll just set it to the side and do a different one um, just to make sure I get it right. But that's the way it is, and that's the way we're going to keep it. So... Um, anything else I want to cover in this? I'm just kind of going off the cusp here, but it's basic stuff, guys. Very basic. Now, tomorrow we're going to get into the red, white, and blue guts, and there's a little more, the more broken a set of gut is, the bigger groove that it has in that tone channel, the more finicky it can be to tune because just if the reads off just a little bit too much, it'll catch in that tone trough and it'll scratch or stick on you. So sometimes it can be real finicky, but a lot of times you get that call and maybe it's moved in shipping, usually doesn't, um, but you can just barely wiggle that tone board a little bit to make it quit catching and it's fine. It's not out of tune, it just might have moved a little bit. Um, also, a lot of guys freak out about 
um, blown reeds, and we'll cover some of that tomorrow. I'll get, I'll, I'll find one. I don't have one here, but um, the, when you shave a reed, you do take a lot out of its, I don't know, lifespan because you're taking layers off of it. So we, our calls tend to go through reeds quicker because we shave the reed to sound like a goose and we shave it thin. That's the way it is. I want stuff to sound like geese and to be easy to blow. Um, if you blow a reed and you're in the field hunting and all of a sudden you look at it and there's a white piece on it, it looks like kind of like my thumb here. I can't you see that white on my thumb. Of course not. Cause nothing focuses, but or a reed will delaminate sometimes and it'll, it's layers of mylar. And sometimes it'll delaminate like that and get a little air pocket in there and it'll look white and it'll turn more white. Um, that's a blown reed. What does it do? How does it affect your call? Not much at first. Uh, right when a call blows a reed or just gets ready to blow a reed, it usually sounds the best for some reason since I've, I've noticed that contest calling. The average guy, you guys aren't going to know the damn difference if you're blowing a call in the middle of a flock of geese and your reed blows. You're not going to even know. I've hunted with a blown reed for three years. I, sh I put pictures on it on, I think, my Instagram page. I've blown that for like three years. It doesn't matter. It makes it a little harder after a while. It gets a little scratchier after a few months. But I mean, you're talking a day or two and you're in the field and you blow a reed. Keep blowing it. It's not going to be any different. It's not going to make any kind of a difference to you guys. Um, so I wouldn't worry about blowing a reed. And I send the extra reed with every call in case you are that worry wart and you think that, oh man, I got a spot on this reed. I need to change it. The geese won't like it. That's baloney. I blow the same one. I'll probably change it this year because it's been three years, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So tomorrow I'll cover more of that. I'll get a blown reed so I can show you guys the difference um, and what it looks like. When it's, what's up, Glenn? And uh, we'll go from there. <laughs> so that's the Grey Guts. Pretty easy, basic stuff tonight. Tomorrow I'll have more time, and we're going to get into the red, white, and blue guts and maybe a few more little tricks I have up my sleeve to help you guys uh, get the call exactly where you want. So hope everybody has a good night. This will go on YouTube. Um, so you can watch this anytime. Peace out, guys. Uh, work hard, pray hard. God is good. Big Sean out.